This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for the 485th edition of MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Before we get to today's video, I do want to draw your attention to my store at Merchland. Right now, you can get coffee mugs and shirts featuring the new logo, so get yourself some cool stuff and support the channel and me at the same time. So now that I've done almost 500 of these, I've looked at a whole lot of creature stat lines, but there's still plenty more. And today we're looking at one of the more efficient stat lines with a look at three mana, three fours. Getting a three four for that cost is above rate, so you don't have to do that much to make a creature with that stat line competitively viable. Adding a keyword or another ability is often enough. To be eligible for this list, all the card had to do was have a mana value of three, a power of three, and a toughness of four. In the long history of Magic, there have been 47 three mana three fours, and in this video, we'll take a look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive Magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top eight is worth two points. This includes events like Pro Tours and World Championships. And a second tier top eight is worth one point, and this includes events like Grand Prix and Magic Fests. All right, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is Stitched Drake. This three mana three four comes with flying, which is pretty sweet. It also comes with a bit of a downside though. You have to be able to exile a creature card from your graveyard or you can't cast it. That's not the hardest thing in the world to do, but it is enough of a hurdle that you can't just put this in any old blue deck. The Drake has been played in both standard and popper, in Standard, it was played in Illusion decks, and in Popper, it's been played in Delver. Both could easily put creature cards in graveyards, so the downside didn't really matter. At number 9, it is Cemetery Prowler. It's kind of funny to look at this 3-mana three 3-4 three, right after Stitched Drake because it comes with a keyword ability and involves exiling cards in the graveyard, just like the Drake. But in this case, the text box is all upside. It can exile things from any graveyard when it enters the battlefield or attacks, and it reduces the cost of spells with the same type as the cards it has exiled. So you can use its ability to hate on an opposing graveyard while also making your spells more efficient, and this is of course all on top of being a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with Vigilance. It's gained all of its points in standard mono green aggro decks, it has a while left in standard, so it has a decent shot at gaining a few more points. At number 8, it is Phyrexian Ironfoot. This 3 mana 3 4 is a snow artifact creature. It comes with the downside of not being able to untap during your untap step, but it also comes with the ability to untap itself for one generic mana and one snow mana. The Ironfoot was particularly good in the standard of 2007, a format dominated by cards like Brine Elemental, Cryptic Command, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, and Shriek Maw. It was a pretty effective way to weaken all of those cards, while also giving you an efficient body to attack and block with. There just wasn't much removal people were using that could actually kill the Ironfoot. It was so good in the format that it saw main deck play as a four of in a lot of different decks, including Blue Black Control, Fairies, Blue White Control, and Reanimator. It hasn't gained any points since 2007 though, and it isn't likely to. It was the kind of card that was good because of a very specific metagame, and that just won't happen again. At number seven, it is Serendib Ifrit. This is an iconic three mana, three four flyer from the early days of Magic, and in its time, it was one of the most efficient creatures there was. Sure, it did one damage to you every turn, but it was well worth it for such an efficient aerial threat. It appeared in two decks to top eight Magic's very first competitive event, the 1994 World Championship, and it saw play into 1996. It hasn't gained a single point since then though, and in the formats it's legal in, the average creature these days is far more powerful than the Ifrit. At number six, it is Feather the Redeemed. Like Serendib Ifrit, this is a three mana, three four flyer. Unlike the Ifrit, the other stuff in the text box is all upside. Feather is great with combat tricks because she returns instants and sorceries that you use to target your creatures to your hand at the beginning of each instep. One of the downsides of combat tricks is often that using up a card for pure damage isn't worth it, but Feather easily gets around that downside by making sure you keep using them, which is a great way to do a bunch of damage in a hurry. There have been Boros Aggro Feather decks in both Standard and Pioneer that look to take advantage of this ability. These decks were common from 2019 to 2020, and a Feather deck top aided a Magic Online challenge as recently as June 2022, so Feather could be gaining more points in the future. 
At number five, it is Burning Tree Shaman. This three mana three four punishes activated abilities since it pings a player anytime one is used. That, combined with the nice stat line, means the Shaman can really quickly pressure opponents who are reliant on that type of ability. Unsurprisingly, Burning Tree Shaman was played in Zoo aggro decks in both block and standard, and it's seen sporadic play since then in formats like Modern and Legacy, but it hasn't actually gained a point since 2006. At number four, it is Rock's Warmonk, a three mana three four with lifelink. That's always a nice keyword ability, especially against aggressive decks. It's been played in banned aggro decks in Standard, Extended, Modern, and Legacy. It still sees a little bit of play in the sideboard of Modern Collected Company decks, but it's been more than 10 years since it last gained a point. These days, creatures really need enter the battlefield abilities or to impact the board no matter what happens to see play, and the monk doesn't really deliver there. At number three, it is Brimaz, King of Oreskos. Brimaz is a three mana three four that comes with Vigilance, and he also has the powerful ability to generate cat soldier creature tokens, both when it attacks and blocks, something that works well with Vigilance, since he can both block and attack on most turn cycles. He was played in a pretty wide variety of decks while he was in Standard. This included all out aggro decks like Boros Aggro, as well as blue white control decks, where the fact he could generate multiple bodies could really help you stabilize. He also gained points in Modern Hate Bear and Legacy Death and Taxes. However, Brimaz has only gained a single point since 2018, and it came in a Pioneer White Weenie deck. Brimaz does have a track record of multi-format success, so it's hard to count him out entirely. I could definitely see him getting reprinted in a historic anthology on Magic Arena or something, so there might be a potential for more points, but probably not for a whole lot of points. And at number two, it's Endurance. This is the newest card on the list, but it's already at number two. And in the long run, it's gonna end up at number one. No doubt this card is very pushed, as are the other incarnations from Modern Horizons 2. This three mana three four comes with Flash and Reach, and an Enter the Battlefield ability that allows you to put a player's graveyard on the bottom of their library in a random order. It also comes with Evoke, which gives you the option of exiling a green card to put it into play for free, but it immediately sacrifices itself. So in that case, you're mostly paying for the Enter the Battlefield ability, but you can do it at instant speed for zero mana, and that's a big deal. Endurance has never been legal in formats like Standard or Historic because it's from a Modern Horizons set, but Graveyard decks are a real presence in Modern Legacy and Vintage, so it isn't too surprising that this has already seen so much play. It's been the most played in Modern so far, and it's basically a staple in green decks in Modern at this point, but it does have points in all three formats. It's going to be the number one card on this list, probably in a matter of weeks, but for now, the number one card on the list is... Thrashing Brontodon. This three mana three four can give itself up to take out an artifact or an enchantment, and that's definitely some nice utility. You can put this in your main deck in a green aggro deck, and you end up with a nice creature who has incidental value in some matchups. It's been in standard a lot since it was first printed in Rivals of Ixalan, and then reprinted in Corset 2020 and Corset 2021, and it's really taken advantage of all that time. In all of those standard formats, you could regularly find it in green aggro decks, provided those were viable in the format. It has seen a bit of play in Pioneer and Historic, but so far, it doesn't have any points in either, so it's built all of its 41 points in the various standard formats it's been a part of. That's a big reason why Endurance is set to pass it. It's gaining points in three formats right now, while the Brontodon isn't gaining points anywhere. So those are the 10 three mana three fours that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. If you want to own any of these efficient creatures, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each of them. If you want to catch up on past MTG top 10s, including more on creatures stat lines, you should see some playlists on your screen shortly. If you want to make sure you catch future MTG top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can go to my merch store, like I said at the beginning of the video, or you can also become a patron or a channel member, and you can find those things in the description. Thanks for watching.